Greetings, AMCers. We are here with director James McTeen on the opening night of his new film, The Raven, which follows the imagined tale of what might have happened in the final days of horror master Edgar Allan Poe's life. This stars John Cusack, Alice Eve, and Luke Evans. It is very good. It's very scary. Um, can you talk a little bit about what sort of drew you to the project initially and then what you wanted to do to bring it to life on screen? Uh, initially, the project came to me through Aaron Ryder, the producer. He produced uh, Donnie Darko and Memento and The Prestige. So he's got a, fa a fairly good ped pedigree. And he brought me this, the script of this, and I really responded to like the central conceit of the movie, which you know you just uh, said, which is basically Edgar Allan Poe's stories, Edgar Allan Poe's life, and Ed and then Edgar Allan Poe in the middle of one of his own stories. So that was the thing that attracted it to me. I, I really thought that was like a good setup because just to make a movie about his life is very sort of moribund because of his troubled existence. Mm. And then just I, I thought what I could do with it visually, I, uh, I really thought there'd be somewhere to go. A, a mixture of period, a mixture of modern, a mixture of, you know, comic book and fantasy I guess we've got some very very excited people here to see the film tonight and yeah. certainly the horror genre is a very very popular genre I spoke with John Cusack the other day and he said he felt like the horror genre was the language of the subconscious I thought that was really interesting I thought that spoke a lot about the appeal of horror do you think that that's true yeah, I do. I mean, yeah, John's pretty smart and erudite, actually. You know, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me he said that. But yeah, I mean, I think people, you know, really key into horror and, you know, uh, for what John said. But also, in a weird way, it's like the dark escapism, you know, like yeah. romantic comedy is at one end of the spectrum and horror is at the other end of the spectrum. And so I think uh, people really like being scared, as all the paranormal, you know, films will tell you <laughs> well this one's kind of interesting though because it's got this gothic literary element as mm -hmm. well so how do you as a director make sure that you're hitting those markers hitting those tropes of the horror and suspense genre and also sort of setting that tone of an Edgar Allan Poe tale well initially a lot of that's in the script and then it's up uh, up to me to visualize that you know I like horror films you know I I've, I've seen I guess I've seen a lot um, and then I think just as you, you go through it, like there's there's visual reference points, there's, you know, narrative and thematic reference points that you, you hit, but then you have to, you know, scope them and make them into something unique as well. So you always try and do that. I think what's cool about it too is that, as you sort of said in the beginning, it kind of feels like it's a metaphor for the creative process where Poe's creativity rises up and strikes against him. Mm. Was that sort of something that you wanted to bring to life? You know, I, what I, I thought was interesting was that you have this concept that Poe has hit, hit writer's block or he has writer's block and then he doesn't know how to get out of it but then someone close to him goes, huh, you know, if I could just inspire him, if I could just get him to write one more great story, and then in the twisted mind of the killer, he goes, well, maybe if I use his own stories, and then I start to put like a little spin on those stories, maybe I can get him going again. And, you know, ultimately he does. But then once he starts to get him going, he starts manipulating him further, you know. So, you know, with, with, with Poe, then it becomes like a race against the clock with Emily, and then with Fields, it becomes, you know, trying to channel Poe and keep him on track. And finally, there is this idea that it is kind of the artist's responsibility to take ownership of their work and what they're putting into the world. Do you as a filmmaker feel like you need to take ownership of your work? Well, I was having a bit of fun with that. I mean, ultimately, it's a piece of entertainment, you know, but it, it is fun to, you know, think that you in some way, you know, whatever you put out into the world there's some sort of you know karmic feedback i guess, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but you know i don't i don't treat it too like heavily i mean i think it's just in in this movie the conceit is because he's writing all these stories and someone you know appropriates them then he has to at some you know uh, at some point you know He's at the River Styx, right? He's like he's like there with the the ferryman, you know, and he has to kind of like make this ultimate deal. So um, you know, there's a bit of that that happens as a filmmaker. There's a bit, there's a bit of that, you know, like Fox News will probably tell you that there is, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. 
Okay. <laughs> I love that answer. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. We're really, really excited to have this on AMC screens. Love the movie. It's really scary, you guys. You should check it out. Okay. Thank you.